for machine learning, I think metaprogramming, I think we could generally say is extremely useful. And so you, you get features, I mean, I'll jump around, but there's the feature of auto-tuning yeah. and adaptive compilation just blows my mind. Yeah. Well, so, okay, so let's come back to that. Sure. So, yeah, all right. So, so what, 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 is, what, is, what is machine learning? Like, what, or what is a machine learning model? Like, you take a PyTorch model off the internet, yeah. right? Um, it's really interesting to me because what, a Py, what PyTorch and what TensorFlow and all these frameworks are kind of pushing compute into is they're pushing into, like, this abstract specification of a compute problem which then gets mapped in a whole bunch of different ways, mm -hmm. right? And so this is why it became a metaprogramming problem. Is that you want to be able to say, "Cool, I have I have this neural net. Now run it with batch size a thousand, <laughs> right? Do 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 a, do a mapping across batch, or okay, I want to take this problem now run it across a thousand CPUs mm -hmm. or GPUs, right? And so like this this problem of like de describe the compute and then map it and do things and transform it are are like actually it's very profound and that's one of the things that makes machine learning systems really special uh maybe can you describe auto tuning and how do you pull off i mean i guess adaptive compilation is what we're talking about as metaprogramming but yeah how do you pull off auto tuning? i mean is that is that as profound as i think it is it just seems like a really like uh you know we mentioned list comprehensions to me from a quick glance at mojo uh which by the way i have to absolutely like dive in uh <laughs> As I realize how amazing this is, I absolutely must dive in. Uh, it, that looks like just an incredible feature for machine learning people. Yeah. Well, so so what is auto tuning? So take a step back. Auto tuning is a feature in Mojo. It's not so very very little of what we're doing is actually research. Like many of these ideas have existed in other systems and other places, and so what we're doing is we're pulling together good ideas, remixing them, and making them into a, hopefully a beautiful system, right? And so auto tuning, the observation is that it turns out hardware systems, algorithms are really complicated. Turns out maybe you don't actually want to know how the hardware works, <laughs> right? A lot of people don't, right? And so there are lots of really smart hardware people, I know a lot of them, uh, where they know everything about, okay, the, the cache size is this, and the number of registers is that, and if you use this what length of vector, it's gonna be super efficient because it maps directly onto what it can do, and like mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff, or the GPU has SMs and it has a warp size of whatever, right? All the stuff that goes into these things, or the tile size of a TPU is 128, like these, these factoids, right? My belief is that most normal people, and I love hardware people also, I'm not trying to offend literally everybody in the internet, um, but uh, most programmers, actually don't want to know this stuff, mm -hmm. right? And so if you come at it from the perspective of how do we allow people to build both more abstracted, but also more portable code, because you know, it could be that the vector length changes or the cache size changes, or it could be that the tile size of your matrix changes or the number, you know, an A100 versus an H100 versus a Volta versus a whatever GPU have different characteristics, right? A lot of the algorithms that you run are actually the same, but the parameters, these magic numbers you have to fill in, end up being really fiddly numbers that an expert has to go figure out. And so what auto-tuning does is says, okay, well, guess what? There's a lot of compute out there, right? So instead of having humans go randomly try all the things or do a grid search or go search some complicated multidimensional space, how about we have computers do that, mm -hmm. right? And so what auto-tuning does is you can say, hey, here's my algorithm. If it's a, a, a matrix operation or something like that, you can say, okay, I'm going to carve it up into blocks, I'm going to do those blocks in parallel, and I want to, this, this with 128 things that I'm running on, I want to cut it this way or that way or whatever. And you can say, hey, go see which one's actually empirically better on the system. Mm -hmm. And right. then the result of that, you cache for that system. Yep. You and, save it. And so come back to twisting your compiler brain, right? So not only does the compiler have an interpreter that's used to do metaprogramming, that compiler, that interpreter, that metaprogramming, now has to actually take your code and go run it on a target machine. <laughs> see, see which one it likes the best and then stitch it in and then keep going, right? So part of the compilation is machine specific. Yeah, well, so I mean, it, this is an optional feature, right? So you don't have to yes. use it for everything. But yeah, if, you, if you're, so one, one, of, one of the things that we're in the quest of is ultimate performance. Yes. Right. And ultimate performance is important for a couple of reasons, right? So if you're an enterprise, you're looking to save costs and compute and things like this, ultimate performance translates to, you know, fewer servers. Like if you care about the environment, hey, better performance leads to more efficiency, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you could joke and say like, you know, Python's bad for the environment, <laughs> right? And so if you move to Mojo, it's like at least 10x better just out of the box and, yeah. and then keep going, right? <laughs> um, uh, but, but performance is also interesting because it leads to better products. 
Yeah. And so in the space of machine learning, right, if you reduce the latency of a model so that it runs faster, so every time you query the server running the model, it takes less time, well, then the product team can go and make the model bigger. Mm-hmm. Well, that actually makes it so you have a better experience as a customer. And so a lot of people care about that. So for auto-tuning, for like tile size, you mentioned 128 for TPU, you would specify like a bunch of options to try. Yeah. Just in the code, yep. just simple statement. Yep. And then you can just set and forget and know, yeah. depending what wherever it compiles, it'll actually be the fastest. And, and yeah, exactly. And the beauty of this is that it helps you in a whole bunch of different ways, right? So if you're building, so, so often what will happen is that, you know, you've written a bunch of software yourself, right? You you wake up one day, you say, I have an idea. I'm going to go code up some code. I get to work. I forget about it. I move on with life. I come back six months or a year or two years or three years later, you dust it off and you go use it again in a new environment. Mm-hmm. And maybe your GPU is different. Maybe you're running on a server instead of a laptop. Maybe you're, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And so the problem now is you say, okay, well, if, I mean, again, not everybody cares about performance, but if you do, you say, okay, well, I want to take advantage of all these new features. I don't want to break the old thing though, right? And so the typical way of handling this kind of stuff before is, you know, if you're talking about C++ templates or you're talking about C with macros, you end up with if defs, you get like all these weird things get layered in, make the code super complicated. And then how do you test it? Mm-hmm. Right? It becomes this, this crazy complexity, multidimensional space that you have to worry about. And, you know, that just doesn't scale very well. 